Welcome to Free Beer Friday, powered in part by Classic of Denton. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Free Beer Friday. I'm your host, Ben Easley, of the Bearded Monk, uh, the beer bar, the beer store, a uh, place to go drink weird craft beer. Um, tonight, let's see. Oh, hey, we got this right here to my left. I've got a print. A print from Warren Luntz. How about that? Look at that. And I think we're uh, we're gonna pick a winner out of uh, the folks that comment, like, or share this video. We'll get this signed print from our local Warren Luntz of the courthouse, made of beer. And the orig if you want to come see the original, it's hanging up at the Monk right now. It's uh, hanging up over our coolers, and that's that's for sale. Yeah, a very sweet price. It's only $7,000. Or you could get a print. You could win this print. There you go. Um, so anyway, to beer, to, to drinking beer, tonight on the show, we've got Upland Brewing. We've got Pete and Adam on the horn. What's up, guys? Hey How's there. How's it going? <laughs> All right. So do we want to talk a little bit about what Upland is? Because so, you guys are just now launching in Texas, like this week. So I, yeah. I don't know if anybody quite knows who you are around here. Yeah, so we, uh, you know, we're uh, brewery located in southern Indiana, about an hour south of Indianapolis, in a town called Bloomington. So it's a Big Ten college town, home of Indiana University. So that's pretty fun. And uh, we've been <laughs> making beer since uh, 1998. So uh, next year is our 20th anniversary. Been around for a and, while. Uh, yeah, so we started out making a lot, mainly ales, uh, ales and lagers, and then in '06 we started to. Uh, dabble in sour beers um we've got a really nice sized winery just north of us and we're able to get wine barrels from them and start our program and um that's really been mm. a huge focus for us over the last you know six to ten years and um that's what we've uh you know gone into the texas market with um these sour beers that we make are all uh wood aged so they're aged in either lark large oak tanks or small uh wine barrels right on and they, they age anywhere from you know, four months up to three years. and uh, Three year ours, aging? Yeah, so we can actually, yeah, the, the, the fermentation in these types of beers, um, they're very long and slow, and over time, there's these really wonderful sour and tart flavors that develop, and um, the longer they age, the more they change, and a huge part of what we do is, you know, finding the right balance of barrels and blending and making some really delicious blends and combinations. That's where, that's where Adam comes in the picture, and he's our, our quality manager and also kind of head of our sensory and blending. So he's got the uh, amazing job of, you know, helping put together the blends and work with the with the brewers and myself and, and work to uh, come out with some of these really amazing uh, amazing beers that we've got up in the market with you, by you guys. Right on, right on. So, Adam, you get to uh... – you get to drink all day, basically, right? That's a real easy job. Yeah, man, it's it's a tough job. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Well, uh, right no, now, it's... oh, what's that? Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, well, I was about to say I'm drinking the Balaton right now, and I'm I'm oh. loving the heck out of this, man. Oh, awesome! Nice. Yeah, yeah, that beer. Um, it's actually a we age it on uh, Michigan cherries, so that's another big part of our process. We'll age. Um, after we've done the aging and blending, we'll, we'll, uh, age the beer on fruit again, whole fruits with the skins and everything up to about three months to give it really a nice prominent fruit character. I'm sure you're picking that up in the, in the Balaton that you're tasting. Oh, it's beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. And that's, um, I think tonight here I'm, I'm, uh, pouring samples in the, the welcome center of the Balaton and the hop synth. So I'm doing free samples after we get done on the show. Awesome. Yeah. And nice. that, that to you guys who are watching and listening to us, uh, if you want to come down here, this is what I'm pouring. You can try all the beers we're talking about, or you can come over to the Bearded Monk afterward and uh, get your own glass. How about that? And drink what a it. deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, the other fun thing about the Balaton is that we, we put a little bit of uh, zest in that as well. So it, it really makes a, a nice sort of uh, punchy kind of character. Oh, yeah, man. God, this is beautiful. There's a little bit of sweetness to it, and that sour just kicks it. I love it. Mm. Nice. Oh. Well, do we do we want to talk about the beers? Uh, 
So you, you guys have brought what? Five beers to Texas? Yeah, How many? I, yeah, we brought I think around maybe eight or so. Not not all in bottles, but um we brought some in just drafts, some really small batch draft stuff for for the launch, which was kinda of fun. Right on. Um but uh, in bottles, I know we brought um, Hopsins, which I think you guys have there. Right on. Uh, that's our dry hop sour. Um, we have our cherry, which is, is different than Balaton. We have a Montmorency cherry. Mm-hmm. Um, in bottles. Um, also, Darken and Revive are two, two beers that are um, uh, both have some spice character. Revive actually has pineapple as well. Um, we also have... Just some single fruited beers like blueberry and kiwi. Those are draft only. There's not those aren't in, in package, but uh, yeah, they're kind of all around uh, Texas right now. Right on. Well, yeah, I think uh, so. We've got kiwi, the Balaton, and Hopsynth on at the Monk, and I think what was it? Revive is on at East Side, and Darken cool. is over at Denton County Brewing. Very so cool. I know that yeah, somebody could do a pub crawl with just your beers tonight. <laughs> that's awesome yeah we got it's, it's uh it was awesome being out there i was actually out there all week and um it's a, it's an awesome scene out there you guys have some fantastic breweries and some fantastic places to drink right on awesome, man. beer yeah it was, it's awesome thank you very much thank yeah, you very much yeah. well it, okay so one of the things i'd wondered what is what is the difference between uh well play flavor profile wise what's the difference between balaton and cherry like what? What am I getting with these different cherry blends? Um, so the so the base beer is uh, we we selected basically a different age. So the the Balaton the beer is a little bit older. Um, it is the same base beer though. So um, you're gonna right get just a little more depth of character in in the Balaton sort of base. Um, you know we picked that cherry because it's it's sort of a little sweeter. Okay. Um, just. A really nice, nice, interesting, uh, bright cherry flavor, and then you know we added the zest um, to to just add another little element, and and I really think it kind of kind of tastes like a like a punch, a fruit punch, um, where the cherry um, is gonna really come across more like a, a cherry pie. Um, okay, that's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving this. And I'm I'm yeah, getting so, in trouble because I've got like one sip left, so I'm trying to stretch <laughs> it out. <laughs> mm. so yeah, the fun thing about our program is, uh, well, you know, it's not necessarily unique, but but we're really only making a few base styles, and um, and then with those we we either blend them together or pick different ages or pick different fruits or spices or combinations. Nice. Of each of those, and and make all these different brands um, with with just a few actual beer recipes to start off with. So, um, you know, it's it's a big contrast to what we do on the on our clean side, where you know we have 50 different recipes a year. Um, for this, you know, it starts off simple, and then the complexity kind of comes in later on with with how we how we blend the different uh, ages and vintages, and 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 use the different ingredients that we do uh, for the refermentations. So you see a lot of change after the fact uh, on the sour program, anyway. Yeah, certainly. I mean, That's we've really got cool. you know hundreds of barrels and and many uh, large fooders, and and each of those sort of give their own little character to to the to the beer. So even though we might be putting the same base beer into them, they they can uh, have a little bit of variation. And so yeah, it's just up to us to to sort of uh, sample all those and and figure out which. What what's going to work well together and with whatever ingredient we we choose to put on the onto them. Right on, right on. So man, that's a long process. Just figuring out yeah, yeah. these blends. This is crazy, absolutely crazy. Um, well, do you guys want to talk a little more about um what you do specifically and where where you came from to get, I mean, to get to this point where we're talking today. Yeah, I can go. Um, I, this is Pete. I've uh, I've been Hi, up on a little over five years. I kind of <laughs> came in um, with a home brewing background primarily. Worked. Uh, I've always worked in the food and beverage industry. Um, so I kind of came in um, really on our clean side of the brewery. Um, we're really trying to get that um, brewery kind of. We had moved into a new location, so I didn't mention mm-hmm. that earlier. We do have um, two separate locations where we where we make these beers. We have a production facility and then a sour brewery. 
uh, that's our basically our original our original brew pub um, uh, brew house. It's so once we brewery. kind of split the brewery, um, we split the brewery up. Um, we dedicated the downtown location to all sours, and then the, the um, I kind of came into the company right when we were starting up our new uh, our new production facility. So I I oversee all production, um, all of our quality programs, and you know the equipment and the, the brewers. And um, kind of help oversee all of our, you know, new beers that we're developing, um, right kind of on. putting our processes in place, make sure, you know, of the maybe close to 80 or 90 beers that we're doing each year, <laughs> that they're all, you know, spectacular and, and delicious. So um, I bounce back and forth between the breweries quite a bit. Between um, regular, then, the regular side and the sour side? Sour side, yep. And yeah. then uh, the last couple of years, we, we put in a new um, wood age cellar, we call it the wood shop. Um, so we actually brew in our brew house nice. at the pub. We pump underneath our uh, parking lot over to a building um, through a two-inch stainless pipe, and that's where we <laughs> age all of our beer in, in the fooders and in the wood. That's so, awesome. Um, that, yeah, that was a pretty fun, uh, fun project. Um, so again, that's kind of where I, um, I had my, a big hand in kind of the design and the building out that space, um, and um, and I'm just kind of making sure um, we're we're making really good beer. Right on, man. Right on, right on. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Adam, you want to chime in with uh, what you do on your side, too? Sure, yeah. So, um, I've been with the company since 2009, and I actually started uh, just part-time helping out in packaging while I uh, was finishing up my degree, and, uh, you know, became a full-time sellerman, I think, in 2011, and uh, whenever we were looking at moving our production facility to uh, to where it is now uh-huh. um, really kind of give were, was given the the reins at that point to start the quality program up so uh, I've been doing that since about 2012 and um, you know just kind of making sure that um, all of our processes work and we you know we we come up with uh, tests to, to check what we're doing and um, making sure that the brewers and, you know, the guys on the creative side of things are, are making sure that, you know, we're asking the right questions and thinking about all the possibilities for whatever crazy harebrained idea they're, they're coming up with. <laughs> um, and then, you know, a big part of what I do too is help out uh, with the blending on the, on the sour side and, and work to, to train our staff up on, um, on their sensory skills so that we can all be a part of, uh, of that process of, you know, making sure that the beer tastes great and, uh, you know, sampling uh, fooders, sampling barrels a bunch and and kind of assessing where they're at and and knowing uh, what we might want to use for for any particular ingredient. Right on. And, uh, yeah, just whatever I can to to make sure that that whatever beer we're sending out to these, especially these far-out markets, is going to taste delicious when it gets there. Well, yeah, so I I joke about, like, being barrel blending you get to just kind of drink whatever you want but i man this is this is an intense job right because you're drinking what uh, uh 40 different blends blend combinations from all these different barrels and you guys have to figure out what the next release is going to be or what yeah what blend you want to tweak in what percentage right and you're taking notes sure, the whole time yeah. Yeah, it, it it's it's a very data driven thing. I mean, even though we're we're primarily using our own senses, you know, it, it generates a lot of data. So managing that and uh, and and just trying to uh, sort of make you know keep an eye on, or maintain sort of uniqueness between each brand, but also mm-hmm. um, making sure that we're kind of hitting some some standards along the way. Uh, but yeah, it can it can be very taxing. I mean, it's. It's not all just sitting around and, you know, kind of cutting up and, and drinking beer, you know. You're kind of doing it with a much more focused uh, approach and um, making making sure that you're collecting the data that needs to be collected and, and analyzing it after the fact. So, oh, heck yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it can be a tough job. <laughs> but come on, at the end of the day, that's still pretty satisfying, isn't it? You can go pick oh, up yeah, a bottle and go, much, hey, though. I decided on that. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know the the greatest part is just um, hearing people's reactions when when something turns out really right, or you know uh, sometimes even those happy accidents that come along the way. Um, you know those those are the really the things that make it all worth it. Right on, right on. Well, and, um, Pete, what are we looking at for 
the future? Or do you know what we're looking at here in Texas? Do you even have an idea of where you want to um, go with this well, market? Yeah, one of the things, you know, with the wood shop and our new seller that we've got, we've got so much, um, you know, kind of room to experiment and tinker mm-hmm. with recipes and or just create new beers. So we've got, you know, we have beers that we make for our seller, really the tiny batches for our pubs, but then out in the market. And I think mm-hmm. – we don't have every beer actually figured out for all of next year yet, but I do think um, we have most of them figured out. <laughs> but right uh, right I think on. for the market out in Texas, we're trying to maybe get, you know, maybe three or four beers out a quarter or something like that. Um, we don't have a whole lot of quantity to ship out there, but at the same time, like we want to make sure we're getting some some of our best stuff out. Um, lots of different fruit, um, fruited styles, and then fruit and spice blends. Um, a couple collaborations potentially coming out there, so oh, we got some fun things. Uh, that's cool. Other breweries, um, yeah, we got some 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 good ones lined up, and um, and yeah, I'm sure we'll be back out in town um, a couple times again next year. So I'm looking forward to it. Right on. So you're actually going to get to come and play a little bit more. Uh, yeah, it was great um, being there. You know, I've got to um, can meet so many awesome people at, at accounts, and then um, you know we met with uh, some friends, uh, good friends of some of the brewers in town, and um so yeah i'm I'm definitely coming back to to, uh to texas here hopefully hopefully before you know six months or so i'd love to get back out there right on man right on yeah you definitely got to come down and party with us (laughs) well cool anything else we want to talk about guys well i mean i I think some of the beers that you've got there you said you had hops in there oh yeah 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 so um just real quick on that one that one's a little bit different than a lot of the stuff we've been talking about um, but it was kind of fun. That one, um, we really needed to get the acidity level kind of low, and we dry hopped it with uh, Citra and El Dorado, which are really fruity, citrusy, mm-hmm. um, and it's 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 a really uh, neat style of beer. It's a dry hop sour. It's just something you, you see a couple of them in the market, but um, if you're really into IPAs, um, you really like hops, um, this this the tartness or this, the acidity level on that's pretty low. It's really really nice and drinkable it's really a beautiful beer so right um on. just for anyone that wants to kind of dabble in sours and try something that um if you never really had one that's a great one i think to start off not trying you think this this is a good way to start somebody off on sours in general i think so i mean it, the the city level is nice and low and um you know and, and again i guess if you like hops that's that's the one thing i will say we we dry hop at a pretty pretty high rate so you gotta like a, a nice bold hop hop character, uh, but it's really nice and clean, citrusy, um, really kind of tropical. I got a little mango in there. It's really, it's really pretty awesome. Right on, man. Okay, yeah, so, so that, I felt bad. Um, you know, I ducked out, and Caitlin and Jamie poured uh, poured some growlers for me, and then I managed to snag a cup of Balaton. But I still haven't tried the hop synth, oh, I and I haven't tried shot. the kiwi because they, they they were cleaning the lines. And then nice. they had enough time to fill the growlers. So when we get done, well, I'm pouring the first sample of hop synth for myself after that. Ah, uh, dude, <laughs> great. Well, it's it's kind of what Adam was talking about a little bit. You know, we we have a lot of uh, kind of different sours or different um, with different levels of acidity. So hop synth's kind of on the lower end. And then you mentioned kiwi, and uh, a kiwi, if you know, if you've got a kiwi fruit, there's a lot of uh, acid in the fruit itself. So that one's a little bit more intense, a little bit more, a um, little more acidity there. Um, so if you're really familiar with sours and you like something that's a little bit more bold, sour flavor, tea would be a really good one to try. Right on. Um, and then the fruited sours, like you kind of like you had with Balaton there, um, they're, they're all very balanced. Um, and the fruit, depending on what fruits we're using, you know, they, they, each of those contributes a little, little different kind of acidity. So the dark cherries or the Balaton cherries, a little bit more sweetness yeah. versus the Montmorency cherries. That's just in our cherry. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're all, I mean, just encourage, you know, folks to give them a shot. Um, if you've not had a sour before, um, we really, we really love them. That's why we're shipping them out to you guys. Um, some, what we're most proud of, um, and some of the, some of the beers, some of the, our favorite beers, uh, we make on a larger scale to, to get out to share with people. So we're excited to have them out there. Right on, dude. Yeah, I'm really, I really love that you've brewed enough to get those to us. That's freaking awesome. Dude, and yeah, I, thanks, I just yeah. realized, uh, too, we, uh, Jake handed me over the, the uh, reply comment system here. Uh, I was looking through comments. Uh, what's going on here? What's some questions about the table I'm sitting at? You can watch this video later too. You can see. You can uh, for you guys who are watching this right now. Pete and I have never met. 
Adam I have never met. This is it, man. We're we're all over the phone. So if you if you tune into this on Facebook, you'll totally see my face. And then I'm gonna go awesome. Facebook stalk you so I can see who you guys are. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, man. Uh what what are some of the more interesting wait, what is this? RJ, what is this? Raise awareness for autism. Could you put a shoe on your head? Is that I think I've gotta do that, right? Is that a thing? I'm calling my wife, by the way. She's a behavior analyst. She works with children with autism. There it is. Is that is that uh, shoe your support for uh, children with autism? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else we got on here? Free beer at the auction. What auction are we having? Are we having an auction, Jake? With beer? Oh, oh, of this thing. Oh, I think we're raffling it. Aren't you choosing somebody? Yeah. Well, if you if you guys come down here, I'll give you free beer. All the beer that we've been talking about tonight. Well, I mean, I've got two of them, right? And then we've got the rest back in the shop. So come down here right now. Figure out if you won this. Get some free beer from me. Maybe I'll call Pete and Adam on the phone and make them talk to us in the lobby. <laughs> Anytime, man. <laughs> right on. Yeah, call. And then Love I'm to going back to the beer. monk after that, and I'm going to drink all nice. these, right? All right. I think that's it on the comments. This is interesting. This is you guys are like chatting up a storm out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, Pete, Adam, thank you so much for talking to me yeah, today. Thanks for, thanks for having us, really. Uh, hell yeah, dude. Great chatting with you. I mean, heck yeah, dude. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be bugging you some more. You guys totally have to come up and play with us next time you're in town, too. We'll do some drinking. Yeah, we were sure. out there long enough. Definitely uh, bring Adam out there and we can uh, we can drink some great beer together. Right on. Right on. Right on. <laughs> Well, guys, thanks so much, and thanks thanks to everybody that's watching us, too. Thank you guys for joining us this week. Uh, come down here, try some of the beers we've been talking about, then come over the muck, try some more beers that we've been talking about. And uh, if I don't see you tonight, I guess we'll see you all next week on Free Beer Friday. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> I need to go get a beer now. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out DentonRadio.com for new Denton artists and where they're playing next. While you're surfing the Internet, make sure you check out our friends Classic of Denton at ClassicofDenton.com. <laughs>